Hey, it's Chad with DriveTheLightning.com. Just going to do a really quick walkthrough. As you know from my previous videos, my mom bought herself a 2017 BMW i3, this guy. So I took a bunch of pictures so we could just take a quick walk around. I want to show you from the front, from the back, the taillights, the uh, range extender, the inside, the doors, the tires. Stay tuned. Let's just check it out. Okay, so my mom went with the BMW i3. What a quirky, weird, fun, neat little car. There's some really interesting things about this. One, you know, it's rear wheel drive. Do you even see that anymore? And I was thinking, actually I was talking to my dad and we were talking about why would they do a rear wheel drive car? And it turns out all the weight is really in the rear on this. You know, the electric motor as well as the um, range extender motor, pretty much right over that back axle. So if this was a front wheel drive car, uh, it would probably not do too too good in the snow. So rear wheel drive car makes sense. Big old 18 inch wheels on this thing. 18 or 20. Big old wheels on this thing. I don't remember. We'll look at some pictures. Uh, the body is so sharp. It's such a neat car. Uh, a side point here about Carvana. She bought it from Carvana. And when it came, it had a bunch of chips all over the front passenger door and the rear passenger door, actually. And when she called Carvana, they said, hey, let's get it. Let's get the body fixed. So they extended her seven day trial period to a month and they made her an appointment so she can get the body fixed and then still decide if it's the car for her or not, which I thought was pretty cool. Not a commercial, don't work for Kavana, don't know anybody at Kavana. You know, don't write me off as some lackey here. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at this, um, some of these pictures. So you can see it's a sharp car, it's different. Uh, but from the front there, you can see it's a pretty cool looking grill. It definitely screams BMW, you know, in that grill, which is inter interesting. Now you go around in the back. Now the back on this is really flat. You can kind of see that. If you ever pull up behind one of these, you, you just start thinking, what is this thing right away? Especially the ones that are like white with black trim. Kind of looks like a stormtrooper driving away from your thumb. It's really trippy. But just zeroing in a little bit more, you can see these taillights. I found this just fascinating. <laughs> Couldn't stop looking at them. It's built into the glass or behind that glass panel. So the, the rear, we would call it a trunk if it was a normal car, the rear hatch, it's like glass. And, you know, the taillight doesn't stick out at all. It's like under the glass or built into the glass. I don't know the mechanics, but it's really, really kind of neat. And then when we open the hatch here, you can see it's not, it doesn't have a ton of room, a, a, a height anyway. Now the seats do fold down, so when the seats fold down, you can fit most stuff you need to fit in there, I'm sure. But the reason it doesn't go deeper, you see this here, open this hatch, and then there you go, that's where the range extender is. That's that gasoline motor with just a couple of gallons it takes, like 2.7 gallons maybe, if I'm wrong, sue me, bro, okay? But it takes a couple of gallons, and what happens is it doesn't move the car at all, which is one of the quirks. Instead, it just charges the battery. So now what you have, you know, is an electric car that you still have to, once in a while anyway, go to the gas station to fill up your uh, two-cylinder motor there. Yeah, so that's weird. And you take this off, you can see there's where you check the oil. So I'm assuming this thing needs oil changes at times. I'm going to recommend she go to the dealer for that. I don't want to climb under this. I don't know what this stuff's all about, you know. It's not like a normal car where you do this stuff for yourself. You really got to take this in for that. So if you're driving, now the good part of the range extender, if you're driving and this one gets 100 plus miles on the battery, but when the battery gets down to 5 miles or so, the range extender just automatically, boom, kicks in and starts charging the battery. So now your range is essentially doubled and you can just keep on trucking. So that's cool. Uh, but because it has this, it also has this, the, uh, you know, the hatch to put in fuel. All right, let's look more. Okay, here's the charging port. You open that, that's where you charge. It takes the CCS type, uh, which is good because you might have read Electrify America is doing away with the Chatamo plugs, which is what my Nissan takes, my Nissan Leaf. And they're keeping the CCS, which means pretty much in the United States, now this is going to be the standard non-Tesla fast charger will be the CCS. So mom will have no problems charging wherever she wants to go. So I am... So happy for her on that deal. Okay, let's check out the doors because the doors are trippy. See how they open? See, you know, they used to call those suicide doors. I don't know if that's an appropriate thing to call them, but they open all funny. 
uh, all wonky like that. So you have to open the front door before you can open the back door, the latch is inside. And then what we found interesting when we were test driving the other day is if you're in the back and you want to get out and grab something, well, you can't open your door until the passenger opens their door and they can't open their door until they take off their seatbelt. So they have to take the seatbelt off, open their door, then you can open your door. And as you can see in this picture from the back seat that you got to kind of wedge yourself in there a little bit if you're a regular size American like this guy, okay? It's a little bit snug. Uh, I was sitting behind my mom who's really short, so that worked out uh, for me. Um, you know what? I don't remember now if it's my mom. I think it's my wife driving this here. She's also pretty short. Again, worked out for me. That's the important part we're trying to get to here is that it worked out okay for this guy. So let's go to the, the one of my favorite parts and one of the quirkiest parts of this car, and that's the tires. You can see that tire, how skinny it is. A little bit bigger maybe than a motorcycle tire. And, um, you know, I don't know if they ever said why or, or what the reasoning was or whatever. But, I, you know, we're YouTube researchers, right? Isn't that where we find information? And if you go and search BMW i3 driving in the winter, you'll find all kinds of videos of people just shredding through the snow like it's no problem. And I wonder if the skinnier tire isn't actually an advantage because a wide tire sits on top of the snow, packs it, boom, it's ice. Maybe that skinny tire just kind of cuts down to the pavement. And then, of course, being rear-wheel drive and having that weight on the rear, maybe that's it. But apparently it does find the snow. Now, I'm going to prove it to myself, and I will make a video of a snow review here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Don't worry, we get plenty of snow. It should work out just fine. So there you go. Hey, that's a couple different angles. That's the BMW i3 that my mom just bought from Carvana. Awesome little car. She's excited. We'll see what the future holds. Many, many, many review videos to come. Have a great day. Take a minute and subscribe. Or not. Yeah, up to you. All right. Have a great day.